that song is 146, not 156, but meet the cross of Jesus. So I'll just, I'll just lie in the song. Beneath the cross of Jesus, I fain would take my stand. The shadow of a body rocks within a weary land. A home within the wilderness, the rest are torn away. From the burning of the noontide heat and the burden of the day. Upon that cross of Jesus, my eye at times can see the very dying form of one who suffered there for me. And from my stricken heart with tears, two wonders I confess. The wonder of redeeming love and my unworthiness. I take no cross thy shadow for my abiding place. I ask no other sunshine than the sunshine of his face. Content to let the world go by. To know no gain, no loss. My sinful self, my only shame. Glory, all of the cross. Amen. That's my meditation for today. Turn with me then again to uh, the gospel according to Luke. We're looking again in chapter 24. And we'll start with verse 13. I'll be reading from New King James Version. Hear the word of the Lord. And behold, two of them were traveling that same day to a village called Emmaus, which was seven miles from Jerusalem, and they talked together of all the things which had happened. So it was while they were, while they conversed and they reasoned, that Jesus himself drew near with them. And their eyes were restrained so that they did not know him. And he said to them, what kind of conversation is this that you have with one another as you walk and are sad? Then the one whose name was Cleopas answered and said to him, are you the only stranger in Jerusalem and you have not known the things which happened in these days? And he said to them, what things? So they said to him, the things concerning Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet mighty indeed and word before God and all the people and how the chief priests and our rulers delivered him to be condemned to death and crucified him. Verse 21. But we were hoping that it was he who was going to redeem Israel. Indeed, besides all of this, today is the third day since these things happened. Pray with me. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we ask you to open our ears that we might hear, our eyes that we might see, open our hearts that we might receive, and open our minds that we might understand. We give you praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, now that Easter is over and, and all of the hoopla from the celebration, everybody goes back to their normal ways normal things that they do. Um, we, we celebrate that day we call Easter Resurrection Sunday as a holy day, a high and holy day. And we, uh, a lot of those who are in Christendom have, for the 40 days previous to his resurrection, uh, allowed themselves to sacrifice various things. We call that Lent. Gave stuff up. But then after that, we go back to our old ways of eating all that stuff we gave up, watching all that stuff that we said that we weren't going to watch during Lent. Mm -hmm. Being in a different way, we go right back to the way we were. All right. This is a story of guys on their way back to the way they were, on their way back to disappointment. 
on the way back to, to the same old humdrum life that they had before, on their way back to doing and believing the same thing, and they have a, a chance encounter with Jesus. A chance encounter with Jesus. And for today, I'd like to just focus on one, one passage, and that is verse 21. But we were hoping that it was he who was going to redeem Israel. Indeed, besides all of this, today is the third day since things happened. Well, I want to talk about disappointment. Disappointment. Well, one of the things that we know is that disappointment comes to every household. It comes to every life. Because we had dreams, we had aspirations, we had plans uh, that were preconceived in our minds, and we believed that that was going to happen. That, that's what we believed. But, but when the rubber met the road, we found out that it didn't happen. And when it didn't happen, we were disappointed. These brothers are on the road, and they're on their way to this little village called Emmaus. And while they're on their way, they meet up with Jesus, and Jesus starts to walk with them. He's like, why are you guys so sad? Why are you walking with your head down? Well, what's going on? And they said, are you a stranger that you don't know what happened in Jerusalem? About these things? They said, what things? How we had hoped that Jesus was the one who was going to redeem Israel. Well, there was a lot of folk who were disappointed, and we all know the story of Judas, how Judas believed that Jesus was going to do something exactly like that. Redeem Israel. Get the occupants out. Let the Roman soldiers go back to where they were before. Let us not live in a land that's oppressed or distressed by other people. Help us to get to where we know we should be. But they put their trust that Jesus would do it. And Jesus never came to do that. Hmm. That's not what he came to do. Uh, well, how do you know that, preacher? Well, let's go for a moment so I can help us see this to stay in Luke's gospel, the fourth chapter. Amen. Luke's gospel, the fourth chapter. Beginning with verse 16. This is the beginning of the ministry of Jesus. Luke 4. And 16, hear the word of the Lord. So he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up to read. And he handed, he was handed the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, the recovery of sight to the blind, to set, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Verse 20, then he closed the book, gave it back to the attendant, sat down, and all, and the eyes of all who were in the synagogue were fixed on him, and he began to say to them, today, the scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. A lot of people believe that when they hook up with Christ, when they become believers, when they uh, finally receive him as Lord and Savior, that he will change things for them. And he says right here, I never came to, to change no things. I came to change you for the things that you're going to have to face. One of the things that we want, we want things to be changed. That's why we go and we... we we pray to him. We turn the situation around. Lord, turn the circumstance around. God, please help this thing to be different than it was. And he's saying, I'm giving you power, hallelujah, so that you can overcome this circumstance, overcome this thing. Uh, well, let me see now. Is, is that exactly what he came Well, I've got another scripture here that might help us to understand that he is in the overcoming Ministry. He wants us to overcome. And he would turn with, with me to John, the 16th chapter, and meet me somewhere around verse 31. John 16 and 31. 
I'm going to start at 29. His disciples said to him, See, now you are speaking plainly and not using no figure of speech. Now we are sure that you know all things, and we have no need that anyone should question you. By this we believe that you came forth from God. Jesus answered them, Do you now believe? Indeed, the hour is coming, yes, and has come, that you will be scattered each to his own and will leave me alone. And yet I'm not alone because the Father is with me. These things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation. But be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. When he says, I have overcome the world, we, we look at it and say, well, wait a minute, he was crucified. He was beat all night long. Folk lied on him. It was his own people. Matter of fact, it was the church elders that were up to kill him. How in the world did you overcome the world, Jesus? Jesus said, because the effects of the world are death, but I got up. <laughs> I got up from the dead. Yeah, yeah, they, they killed my body, but they didn't destroy me. And what he wants to get to us is that we need to have that same mind. Let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. That mind, that, that what, what kind of mind? That overcoming mind. Matter of fact, if we had time, we would turn to Romans, the 8th chapter, and look at verse 37, where he says we are more than not through him who loved us. We're more than conquerors. I wanted to understand what that meant, so I looked it up in the, in the Greek, and the, the word was hooper or hyper conquerors, which, which means we are preeminently conquerors. We have preeminently overcome the things of this world, and the thing that is in this world that is causing people hallelujah, to miss their blessing is they don't know. It's ignorance ignorance of the word of God. You mean to tell me he died so that I might be a comforter? I might be a conqueror and I'm walking around here like I'm defeated? I'm walking around here with my, my head hung low? I'm walking around here in depression? Matter of fact, I'm not walking in depression. I'm sitting in my chair. I'm, I'm laying in the bed. I, I, I'm somewhere in the dark because I'm depressed because the situation, the circumstance, whatever it was, did not turn around when I asked the Lord to change it. The Lord's answer was, I'm changing you so that you can overcome the situation. Not that I can stop the situation, not that I'm going to kill the situation, but I, uh, I have given you power to overcome. Brothers and sisters, we, we're not like the world. We've got to go acting like the world. Yeah, yeah, we're going to have disappointment. Yeah, disappointment's going to come, but we're going to see it. But you know what? He's given us power to overcome the disappointment. That's what we've got to understand. Jesus never came to change the, situ the situation. He never came to change your circumstance. He gave you power to overcome. Power. Well, what, what's, what's the difference between changing the situation and overcoming the situation? Yeah, yeah. So, so the situation does it not kill me. It doesn't keep me down. It doesn't keep me depressed. It doesn't kick me to the curb. I'm not so despondent that I don't understand that I've got power over this situation. Yeah, I might be broke today, but tomorrow is coming. Yeah, my heart might be broken right now, but there's a new day tomorrow and brand new mercies I will see. I've got to get over understanding or thinking that God is going to change the situation and circumstance for me. He's changing me to overcome the situation, to overcome the circumstance, to overcome the heartache, to overcome the heartbreak. He's changed me to be more than a conqueror. And so I've got to get to the place where I understand that he's given me power to do that. Or is it power? The power is in the Holy Spirit. Because in the gospel according to John, he says, I'm going away. And it's better that I go away because if I go away, I can send the comforter to you. And when he gets there, he's going to convict the world of sin. Mm, well, well, what good is that to me? Well, a lot of us need a wake-up call because we think we got it all together. That's right, out of witness. Some of us think we understand the way it is. And yet we're still going through the same old valley of the shadow of poverty, the shadow of death, the shadow of doubt. 
We're still in the same place that we've always been because we haven't been renewed yet in our mind. We're still thinking the same old way, still, uh, still reacting the same old way, as though the situation has, has power over us. He died and got up so that he could show us, I got power over the situation. I wish I had a witness in here. Amen. You don't have to stay down. You don't have to stay disappointed. You, you don't have to stay in the situation you're in because you're more than a conqueror through him who loved us. He showed us when he got up from the grave that nothing can hold him down. He showed us that for him, all things are possible. He, hallelujah, he confirmed all the scripture, all the stuff that he'd already said when he got up. Yeah. In the gospel it says, uh, with men it's impossible. But with God, all things, come on now, are possible. Yeah. If I understand all things are possible, I understand that it's possible for me to be this new creation that he's created in me. So why should I still be walking around with my head down? Why should I be walking around talking about one day my ship's going to come in? Why should I be st still planning on the, hitting the lottery when God has given me blessings right now that cause me to be different from who I was born to be? My goodness. One of these days that it all makes sense to you. That that's why he says you must be born again. Because if you're not born again, you're still dealing with the circumstance and the situation of the world controlling your life. But he has set us free. But you've got to take the freedom. <sighs> you can't keep denying it. You can't keep throwing it to the side. You've got to take it. This road to America's Hallelujah. Scripture is a good scripture because these boys, they are discouraged big time because they had put their hope in Jesus turning the country around. He's going to turn it around. He's going to turn the situation. He's going to turn the circumstance. He's going to turn the country around. But Jesus never said he was called to turn anything around but us. Amen. Amen. And he can turn us around, but we've got to submit ourselves to him. We got to give ourselves to Him, Amen. Oh, the songwriter wrote, "I give myself away so that You can use me." One of the things that's standing in our way from being blessed is us. We won't get out of the way. We we won't allow ourselves to be crucified. We won't allow our old man to die. We keep bringing him up. We keep resurrecting him from the dead. How do you know that, preacher? Because a lot of us could have been a whole lot further off than we are now, but we wouldn't forgive somebody. And unforgiveness causes us to still be in the category of enemy to God, because he's given us a commandment, not a suggestion, uh-uh, a commandment to forgive one another. Yes, Lord. And he holds us accountable when we don't. Uh, uh, how do you, how do you, you know that? It's in a prayer that we pray. Forgive us our debts as we forgive those who trespass against us. For forgive us as we forgive those. A lot of us have not forgiven folk. We're still holding grudges. We're still sharpening axes. We haven't buried the hatchet yet. We're still sharpening it and ready for it to go and hit somebody because they hurt me five days ago. They hurt me five weeks. They hurt me five years ago. They hurt me five decades ago, and I'm still carrying that same old hatchet. This thing is not about him changing the world. It's about him changing us individually to conquer the world. Mm. The world system right now is, is beating us up really bad. It's beating it up so bad that there are a lot of Christians who have retreated. You know, they've retreated to their homes. They re retreated back to a book. They retreated the music, they retreated from something somewhere, something else, but they've retreated from the glory of God. And because they retreated, they're not going to share in the blessing. They're not going to share it in his glory. Right. If you've retreated, it's time for you to come back. Come back to him. How can I come back? Come back by reading that word. Come back by becoming hungry and thirsting after his righteousness. Come back to him. Because we have seen this thing in a wrong light for a long time, and we're still praying, Lord, change the situation. 
got a bad boss at work and, and he's he's really ruffling me. So when, when I when I come home, I'm still thinking about it. When I go to bed, I'm still thinking about it. When I get up, I'm still thinking about it. I don't feel like going into work. I, I feel like quitting that job because the one person is making my world messed up. And I've got to be praying to you change this situation. God says, I want to change you for the situation. So that one day you can say, you know what? I am more than a conqueror through him who loved me. Boy, this is the kind of stuff that we need because we've got kids who are depressed right now. We've got neighbors, friends, and loved ones who are depressed right now. We've got folk who are in despair who are ready to give up on life because they say God didn't change my situation. He didn't change my circumstance. No, he's giving you power. Hallelujah. So that you're changed for the circumstance. You've got to understand that you are more than a conqueror and the circumstance can't get you down. But the more you talk about it, the more you say the circumstance, this circumstance is killing me. It's taking my joy. It's stealing, stealing my, it's, it's messing me up in the mind. I can't do nothing but think about it. Hey, Jesus said, let, let me show you something. I'll let the world kill me, but I'll get up. And when I get up, I've got all power in my hand. You know what? Before he died, he said, the things that I do, John 14, you shall do also. Wait a minute, he just stopped there. He said, and greater things than this shall you do because I'm going to my Father. When I get to my Father, I'm going to send you power. His name is the Holy Spirit. He's going to be inside of you. He's not going to be walking with you. And he's going to give you the power to overcome your circumstance, to overcome your situation. But you've got to let that power be in you. You've got to use that power. So many of us are still trying to calculate and come up with a, a scheme, a way, or something, how we can get over it, how we can get through it. Jesus has given us this way. And his way is you become empowered to overcome what's been eating you up. My brothers and sisters, we we're, we're no different than the apostles. Here are two of his disciples on the road to Emmaus. Knew him. Knew what he had said. Seen the things that he had done. Yet, they are depressed and they've lost hope because the one they believed was going to change the world for them. He died. But Jesus said, I'm alive show that I have in fact conquered the world. I've conquered the effects of the world. I, I've conquered the, the, the heart of the world, the heartbreak of the world. I've, I've conquered it because even though it looked like it killed me, it caused me to be resurrected. And now I'm alive forever and it can hurt me no more. My brothers and sisters, we are more than conquerors. But we're only more conquerors through Jesus Christ who loves us. And if he's not the pinnacle in your life, if he's not the first in your life, then the things that he promised can't have any import in your life. Well, well how do you know that? He said, this is the first and great commandment. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind. Second thing he says, you shall have no other gods before me. That means people who influence you, things who influence you, uh, things that cause you to do something other than him, you should have no other gods before me. On these two things, if we would just understand how important they are, we can change how the world affects us. We are, in fact, more than, con more than conquerors. But the question is, is, how come you haven't shown that yet? How come you still allow what people said about you to keep you down? How come you still allow negative, hallelujah, criticism, negative folks, negative speak, negative images, negative stuff in your life when God has called you to be more than a conqueror? Disappointment hurts. But you know what? You can cut disappointment off. How can I do that? By grabbing hold of the power of God, his Holy Spirit, which will bring you up out of darkness into his marvelous light. Life is tough. Life is hard. Life sometimes is even cruel. 
But God is always good. And he wants, hallelujah, to change you for the situation, the circumstance that you might step on it and don't let it trample on you. My brothers and sisters, it's time for us to get more than a conqueror mentality, more than a conqueror attitude. It's time for us to walk in the light and in the freedom of the light. You can do it. Christ not only died, but he rose again to show you that he's got the power. And if he's got the power and he promised the things that he did, we would do also. It must be true. Hmm. Well, it's all based on what will you believe. What will you believe today? Will you believe what you, you think that's, that has not been cultivated through the word? Will you believe on somebody else's opinion and what they say, when you believe on stuff you see on the internet, on some kind of social platform, when you believe all that stuff, or when you believe in the truth that Jesus rose from the dead, and when he rose, he rose to show us that he had overcome the world. You can overcome it too. How can I do that, Pastor? By finally giving up on your way and your will. He says, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. And if you know the Father, you will know me. If you know me, you know the Father. He says it's reciprocal. It's time for us to put him first and see what happens when he, in fact, is the joy of our salvation. My brothers and sisters, if you've been down, you've been disappointed, you've been distressed, you've been in despair, it's time for you to get up. Because Jesus did not come, hallelujah, to set the world right. He came to give us power that we might overcome the world. Are you ready for that overcoming? Yeah. I don't know nobody who is not. I know we're all ready. But are you ready to allow him to give you the power so that you can overcome. Let's pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank and we praise you for your mm -hmm. word. We thank and we praise you for your word and your way according to your will in our lives. We thank and we praise you, God, that even when we had it wrong, we had wrong expectations, we had wrong understanding. When we were I'm going by others' opinions and stuff that we heard on the side and didn't, Lord, uh, seek you first in the truth of your word, but went by how we felt or what the situation looked like. Lord, we ask you to forgive us and allow us now to search your word and learn for ourselves what you see. And not just what you said, but what it means. And help us to be believing what you see. God, you've given us the advantage that these brothers on the road to Emmaus never had. Yeah. You've given us the advantage of seeing the end of the story. Hallelujah. So help us, Lord, to grab a hold of the precious word that sets us free. Oh, God, you have said that we could do those things that you did. And greater things than that. So help us to believe. Believe in the resurrection. Help us, Lord, to believe that we'll get up. Help us, Lord, to believe that we can get up today from depression and despair and discouragement. Help us to believe today, God, that we can move forward and not stay in the same place we are. Help us, oh God, huh, to have dreams and visions of better. And help us, oh God, to be the catalyst that makes it that. We declare and decree that you've given us the Holy Spirit. And we say thank you for it. Now, Holy Spirit, we ask you to help motivate us in a way that's going to bring the name of Jesus honor, glory, and praise forever and ever. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.